In this video, I'll be making a utility knife to use around my shop, but instead of using steel, I'm gonna make this out of an alloy of aluminum and copper called aluminum bronze. It's a surprisingly hard metal, and it'll be interesting to see if the blade will be able to stay reasonably sharp after I cold forge the edge. So normally I'd start a project like this by making a wooden pattern of the knife. Then I'd use that pattern to make a sand mold for sand casting. Instead, I decided to cast a sheet of bronze and then cut the shape of the knife out of that. By doing it like this, I could cut around any possible imperfections in the casting and potentially end up with a much nicer result. I had this sheet of acrylic laying around that I used to make some fidget spinners a few years ago, back when that was a thing. It's just about the right thickness and the quickest way to cut it was just to use my CO2 laser cutter. I'll be using this piece as a pattern to make a sand mold, so I filed a slight bevel on each edge so that I could more easily remove it from the mold. I made a simple two-part mold using a special oil-bonded sand called Petrobond. I won't go into detail about how I made it, but if you're interested in knowing more about how I make these molds, I have a lot of videos on my channel that talk about that. Aluminum bronze can be a tricky metal to cast with, and it tends to shrink a lot as it solidifies in the mold. So it's important to create a riser in the mold. This is essentially a reservoir of molten metal that feeds the casting as it solidifies and shrinks. Aluminum bronze alloys can have a lot of different compositions, but for this casting, I'll use 90% pure copper wire and 10% pure aluminum. I have experience using this specific alloy and I know it's very hard and not very brittle. I started by melting the copper in my homemade furnace. Copper melts at 1984 degrees Fahrenheit. This amount took about 25 minutes to melt. Once it was completely molten, I added in the aluminum. Aluminum has a much lower melting point than copper, so as soon as I dropped it in, it almost instantly melted. I let the aluminum bronze heat up to about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I removed it from the furnace and poured it in the mold as quickly as possible. I let the mold cool down for about 20 minutes and then opened it up to see what the casting looked like. I could see that the riser did its job preventing the casting from shrinking and I was happy to see that the casting looked good. Next I went to work cutting out the shape of the knife. Fortunately I have a metal cutting bandsaw which made quick work of cutting through the metal. I followed that up by using a large disc sander and some hand files.
At this point, the knife was starting to look pretty good, and the next step was to grind in the edge bevel. A grind like this would take an experienced knife maker a few minutes on a belt grinder, but unfortunately I don't have a belt grinder so I had to improvise. I built a simple jig to allow me to accurately grind the bevels. This actually worked really well, aside from the fact that it took about 6 hours. I can tell you that this was definitely one of the most tedious things I've ever done. Once I was about halfway done with the grind, I cold forged the edge of the blade. This process actually increases the hardness of the metal by crushing its crystalline structure. After cold forging the edge, I finished the grind so that the hammer marks were no longer visible. I'm really happy with how the grind turned out, but unfortunately it did reveal a bunch of tiny bubbles within the casting. I was really disappointed to see this, but they really are just superficial and won't affect the overall strength of the blade on a small knife like this. Next I needed to work on the handle, and to do that I needed to make some copper pins. To make pins, I melted some copper in my electric furnace and then poured it into a very simple sand mold that I made using some old Petrobon sand and a brass tube. This is about the simplest form of metal casting, and as you can see, the results aren't great, but the pins turned out good enough for their application. Once I had my pins made, I could drill some holes in the handle that were just the right size. I really like the way walnut looks against the golden color of bronze, so that's what I used for handle scales. To attach the wooden scales, I carefully peened the ends of the soft copper. This slightly expanded the diameter of the pins, locking the scales in place. It's a bit nerve wracking because this can easily cause the wood to split, but fortunately that didn't happen. Now all I had to do was shave down the pins and shape the handle. To seal the wood, I used some wipe on polyurethane. It might not be the best option, but that's what I had on hand. The final step was to put an edge on the blade, and to do that I used some files and a diamond coated sharpening steel. I really only expected this knife to be sharp enough to open boxes, but I was really surprised by how well the aluminum bronze was able to hold an edge. The blade was still hair shaving sharp after testing it by cutting some pieces of paper. I really enjoyed making this knife and I'm really happy with how it turned out considering that this was my first attempt at making a knife with an edge that I ground myself and pinned on handle scales. I realized I could have made the same knife with a piece of high carbon steel, but I wanted to see how well aluminum bronze would hold up, and that's something only time will tell.
Well, I think this thing turned out really cool looking, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make it. If you did, please let me know what you think in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for future videos. As usual, I'll have affiliate links in the description for things that I've used in the video, as well as things I would recommend. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.